This is the story of a snow leopard painting. A painting that should have been quite simple and straightforward. But it turned out not to be. The painting has its origins back in the winter of 2021. I was exploring the Swiss Alps in search of deep snow and the inspiration that I get from visiting extreme environments. Even with snowshoes, it was so hard to cover ground in such deep snow and time after time I found myself perilously stuck. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm getting stuck. Okay, <laughs> let's go back. I thought of the animals that routinely live through such conditions. Exposing yourself to their world, if only briefly, gives you a whole new appreciation of what marvels of creation such animals really are. Out there I thought about snow leopards. What better way to paint a snow leopard than to express the extreme environmental conditions in which they live. A snow leopard painting was born. And once the painting had begun, a new element of that cold environment spontaneously developed on the canvas. Icicles, man. Icicles. I would make this painting a homage to the cold and frozen world of the snow leopard. I would paint her surrounded by ice. Ice is just water, right? How difficult could it be? I'll paint her against the backdrop of a frozen waterfall. She will be lying on a sheet of ice, a ledge of some kind. I'll just make it up as I go along. So many of my paintings start this way. I have an idea and I don't want to dwell on any difficulties that might come. I want to hold fast onto my vision and I will myself to bring that vision into creation. Wiser or less impulsive people might prepare thumbnail sketches. But sometimes for me, if I see a vision clearly enough in my mind, I just want to get started and I'll solve any problems that come along then and there on the canvas. For the initial blocking of this painting, I'm actually working with uh, Winsor & Newton and Cobra water soluble oil paints. I thought I'd just give them a try to see how they how they handled and uh, see if they'd be a good way of uh, blocking in initial paintings. They actually take just as long to dry as the regular ones. But um, but yeah, the properties of them, they actually handle, handle quite well. And so that's what you see me working with here. I'm just testing how they blend on the initial blocking layer. After that, I'll be working with regular oil paints. When I paint fur, I first of all lay out the colours and tones of each part of the animal and gently blend them together to give me a feeling of the three-dimensional form and how the light is falling upon it, changing the colours as it does so. This base layer, once dry, will serve as an excellent starting point for the finer intricacies of fur painting that will come. And after a short while, I could see that my ideas were taking some kind of physical form. But there was a long way to go. I had three paintings on the go at this time. And after the initial block-in of the snow leopard, I finished both a portrait and a bear painting before resuming work on it. 
In hindsight, I'd have been better to carry on with the snow leopard whilst the vision was still fresh and clear in my mind. Not only that, but I also suffered a pretty serious back injury right at this time, which made painting unbearably painful. Not something I had anticipated, and it's hard to be creative and imaginative when most of your attention is taken up by the pain. But I persevered. I managed to paint in short bursts of sort of 30 minutes at a time in the evening, things like that, and uh, gradually I could prolong those sessions and feel my way back into it. I'm playing around with colour blends and tonal values here before moving into some more definite forms of ice. When flowing water freezes in this way, it creates the most magical structures, natural ice sculptures that can compete in terms of sheer beauty with the snow leopard itself. And that combination of competing magnificence within the painting turned out to be one of the more difficult things to handle than I had at first anticipated. The subtle balancing of elements within a painting can mean the difference between success and failure and its importance should never be underestimated. And that's what I'm striving for here. I'm seeking not only to draw in the icicles that I need, but to keep one eye on the impact that every one of those has on the entirety of the painting. I'm looking for balance. It's a very difficult thing to do, but that's what I'm aiming for. Okay, let's talk about the fur for a moment. Painting fur in oils or any medium it's much the same. I certainly do it the same way as I would do it in pastels. I concentrate first and foremost on the larger physical form. What shape is it exactly? How is the light falling upon it? And how is that light affecting the colours and the tones? Forget the details for now. They can come later. And they're easy to apply if your larger form is built up first. The boundary between light and dark is where your warmest colours will be found. And these I often apply with a thin glaze and then I work highlights into that wet in wet. My medium here is 50% walnut oil and 50% Winsor & Newton artists painting medium. I sometimes play with those ratios depending on how fluid I want the paint to be. At all times I want wet in wet mixing on the canvas. I'm not one of those oil painters who's constantly waiting for the paint to dry.
got whiskers on this side. I'm just going to put the whiskers in on the other side now. The brush I'm using here is a size 2 pointed round and if you notice I squeeze the brush flat with my fingers before dipping it into the paint. That way you can get a very very fine line which is perfect for the whiskers. happy with the snow leopard but what about the ice remember what I said about elements competing for attention I felt here that the balance was off I'd got a little carried away tunnel vision if you like just painting icicle after icicle dredged from my imagination I had fun doing it but I'd violated a basic principle I teach regularly in my classes I'll blame it on the bad back. Painting icicles is fun, but my painting deserved more attention and a deeper understanding of the interplay between the elements. That's what's going to make this painting work. Okay, so it's a couple of days after Christmas. Um, I feel I was rushing this painting a little bit. It's, it's been bothering me. And I think there's always a danger with deadlines and, and things that are coming up like Christmas and things like that that you you get a bit distracted and I think that's what happened to me with this one I uh, I took the background for granted I think that's the problem uh, that yes I'd just do this that and the other and it would all work well I don't really feel it does work and I think actually having had a couple of days off over Christmas and had time to really think about it uh, I realise how how far off this background is from where I actually need it to be. So today I'm going to radically change this picture. So what I feel needs changing is this. This height here, everything's too high up on the right hand side. So I want to bring this down, bring this down here, bring our rock or whatever we have here, bring this down so this side is longer, actually build up something on the other side. This is far too busy. This needs to be simplified. Uh, and I think what we need is, a, at the moment we've just got ice and leopard, uh, which was the original idea, but I think it needs a third element. So I'm going to introduce some stones or some some stone in the background, possibly a stone here. And so the great change began. My back problems behind me, I felt I had finally reconnected with my original vision. Yeah. <laughs> All that was left to do was bring that change about. Crazy man.
see here a lot more simplification of the background which allows the snow leopard to uh, be more of the focus of the painting which is the way it should be uh, I thought the ice in the in the previous version the ice was was competing with the main subject this section over on the left of the painting it was always bothering me never seemed to look quite right so I'm giving it uh, a final makeover constantly reviewing everything I do um, and if something bothers me it has to go subliminal sort of continuity between top top and bottom ice. And there we have it, painting's finished. I did toy with the idea of putting a few snow flakes coming down uh, about at about thirds, about here, just putting one or two snow flakes in decided against it. It was 50-50. Um, sometimes, you know, you get that feeling you can just push things too far. Uh, so, decided to leave the snowflakes out. Don't really know if that's the right decision or not. I know a lot of artists follow this pattern where they plan everything out and they uh, do lots of little thumbnail sketches and that sort of thing. Great, great. If you do that, it's great. For me, I don't seem to... I don't seem to have the patience to do that. I like to just get stuck into the painting. And it costs me dearly sometimes, uh, as, you, as you saw with this one. I mean, a completely different background. I've, I've painted this picture twice, in effect. Uh, completely different here, but I, I, I like this evolutionary process of having fun with the actual painting. Um, it's just me. Every, every artist has their own way. Um, some paintings are a bit more planned out and you know exactly how they're going to look but paintings like this one for me are a bit more interesting they sort of keep me keep me awake at night thinking oh what if i did this what if i did that are those is the background competing with the with the main subject and and that's was the problem uh, in the past with this painting so what i did um toned this right down too much detail down here is of course, it's nice, but it's distracting from the main focus of the painting, which is the, the beautiful snow leopard. Also the background, when it's too colorful and too in your face, it's, it's shouting, look at me, look at me. Um, which again, isn't a good thing because this is the star of the stage and the rest is just the stage. So the, 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 the stage sets should, should enhance the star and it wasn't doing. 
so that's why I had to change things very very dramatically in this painting but I learned a lot doing it as well you know you're always learning always always finding new ways different sort of combinations of of mediums and and, and whether you're glazing or you're painting directly or dry brushing or th th there's always different things that you try when you challenge yourself and I think uh, this painting has, has, has uh, really taught me a lot actually and it, and it fills me with uh, a lot of enthusiasm for the next one.